This video is brought to you by NCIX.com. Great technology, selection, and service. I don't know, man. Well, enjoy your voiceover. Guys, enjoy him talking to the camera. All right. Bye, Eber. Bye. The curve on the desk is a growing trend, that is for sure, and is a fantastic way for media consumption and entertainment. But is it any good for editing and gaming? Meet the LG 34UC98, the latest hot curved panel from LG spanning at 34 inches, 3440 by 1440 resolution. It's a 10 bit IPS panel and AMD FreeSync support and a pretty extreme curve. Priced at 1200 bucks, you gotta think long and hard before taking the plunge to see if the curve is everything you want it to be. So here's my side of the story. Now, I wanted to see if I would be comfortable uh, replacing my dual monitor setup, which are 144 Hertz IPS and 1440B panels with the LG 34UC98. That from an organizational point alone, that would add extra order to my desk setup and actually let me place speakers on each side of the monitor, given my limited desk space. I really love the design language of this monitor with an aluminum stand that has a curve of its own, a bit more aggressive than the panel itself, but still beautiful in design. It may be challenging to organize the little things around the stand because, because of that curve, but I honestly think it's totally fine. Now, unlike the previous model, this monitor has some flexibility with the stand, allowing plenty of height adjustment, angle adjustment, and even small horizontal rotation uh, to allow you to strengthen the panel in case it's slightly crooked. The rear housing of the monitor is white, which may look odd at first, but I think it has the potential to blend in more within your space if it's not facing the wall versus a fully dark frame. And behind the stand is a vase mount for walls or monitor stands. The IO includes dual Thunderbolt 2.0, uh, dual USB 3.0 with quick charge support, so that's awesome. Then there's display port to run uh, the screen in free sync mode, dual HDMI 2.0, a headphone jack and power in. Now, I love that we have Thunderbolt in here to diversify your input options, but no Thunderbolt cables included. We only get an HDMI and a display port cables, which are also in white to keep up with the color scheme. For cable management, I love the simple and tiny clip that attaches to the bottom of the stand and helps to hide anything from the front view, which is awesome. The built-in 7 watt stereo speakers are actually quite decent and loud enough with detailed projection, so let's take a listen. So now let me play you this sound sample. let's focus our attention on the panel itself. As I said earlier, the curve is a little extra curved, so at arm's length, it wraps around your vision. In my experience with the earlier model, I could not stand video editing as everything on the screen is distorted. And so all your lines are skewed and for creative professionals, not having reference straight lines, you know, is just very difficult to work with. With this model, the curved lines are amplified because of the extra curve, but I gave it extra shot as my daily driver where the majority of time was spent on my premiere timeline so shifting the video preview window closer to the middle is quite helpful to reduce the curvature and of course going full screen with 16 by 9 content means black bars on either side but as users migrate towards this 21 by 9 format i'm pretty confident that we'll see more compatible content which in this native resolution and native format is absolutely fantastic and combine this with the calibrated colors and pleasing contrast to make media consumption so, so awesome. Now, take this trailer, for example, which fills the entire screen. So give you an idea of what watching a cinema format 4K movie would feel like. And then there are content creators like Ash Taylor, whose movies in 21 by 9 deliver such a unique cinema feel. It makes me want to produce in this aspect myself so I can enjoy content with this monitor. Now, I feel the hesitation from the consumer side who want to experience uh, 21 by 9 content is the availability or the lack of it. 
Sure, you find some amazing gems here and there to watch that fill up the screen without black bars anywhere, but even still, it feels fantastic to be among the early adopters of this aspect ratio. And this is where we come to talk about gaming, since LG has equipped it with FreeSync support via DisplayPort with an extremely limiting variable refresh rate range of 55 to 75 hertz. So the refresh rate at native resolution is 60 hertz, but with FreeSync, uh, our refresh rate ceiling goes to 75 hertz. So effectively overclocking the panel for smoother gameplay. The sucky thing though is about FreeSync is the minimum supported refresh rate, which is 55 hertz. So when your frame rate drops below 55, you will still encounter tearing and stutter. Now, gaming at the scale is pretty awesome with the aggressive curve giving you extra round warp but it's not easy to drive this resolution above 55 FPS. When I was gaming with my 980 Ti, the frame rate was okay, but I just couldn't handle all the tearing and stutter. So FreeSync support is totally attractive. This, however, means a beefy AMD GPU is required for gaming on this panel with carefully selected in-game settings. So your frame rate does not drop below 55 because then you start to stutter and tearing occurs. It is definitely an upgrade over the previous generation models, but if only the minimum supported refresh rate uh, while in FreeSync mode was you know below 55 hertz, somewhere around 40, so that gamers aren't really stranded for their FPS uh, and have to lower in-game settings in order to play at the proper native resolution. Now, I would still prefer a faster refresh rate for FPS games where I don't really care about the visual experience, although playing squad with the sunset map was crazy satisfying or the forest map to give you extra field of view which actually is helpful and this visual beauty is only made better for slower pace hack and slash games like Victor Vran which is stunning in native resolution beautiful colors and this extra wide resolution also gave you extra visual of the map which turned out to be super useful in seeing beyond my usual 16 by 9 aspect when I opened Tomb Raider which is part fighting and part exploration this unique environment isn't any more pretty in 21 by 9 but it feels like more of a cinema experience which to some degree improved my game time now when we talk about backlight bleed on previous models which was significant here it is minimal uh, with some minor spots visible around the perimeter which are honestly only visible on camera when you're overexposing and this is what it looks like to your naked eye which I think is totally fine now, when we talk about this phenomenon of 34 inch curved desktop displays making it into our lives and the most common term used to describe it as an immersive experience, uh, you know, simply because the thing sort of wraps around your front vision, I don't particularly think that's the best way to describe your entire experience. Instead, I would call it a tempting experience because the real drawback here is the lack of available 21 by 9 content, which isn't the fault of uh, you know monitor manufacturers, but it's the fault of us as uh, consumers catching up to that format and really uh, us even as content producers trying to reach that same 21 by 9 output, which isn't uh, to the level that we want it to be just yet. I have gotten used to editing with this monitor with shifting a few of my windows around, but when it comes to gaming, sure with a powerful AMD card and uh, it's, it can be satisfying as long as you maintain your frame rate within the free sync range within 55 and 75, but that is extremely limiting. So the 34 UC98 is not a gaming monitor by any means. Instead, it has fantastic color information and depth and to my eye, very good screen uniformity to make for an awesome multimedia package with some gaming tricks up its sleeve. We'll make sure to produce some 21 by 9 content ourselves so we can also contribute to you know, the rising popularity of this format. So guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions about the panel and my experience with it moving forward, make sure to leave them in the comments down below and I will make sure to respond to you. I'm Dimitri with Howard Knox. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next video. I'll call you up again when, you, when I'm done. Go. Okay, okay, all right, all right, all right, all right. I'll go, I'll go. Oh man, okay, Heber's gone. Let's do this.